Comic Butch in the house. You know what that means. We got to talk about some funny books. Another week, another list. Russ, you look like you got into an accident. Tom, I heard myself trying to open my third eye, kind of like Doctor Strange this week. It's okay, because I am still here to do the trending 10 list with you, like we do every week. That's right, hit the subscribe button, slap the like button. If not for Russ, do it for Comic Butch. And let's get a glimpse of the afterlife at number 10. Number 10 on the list, Grim number one, the one in a hundred Jenny Frizen variant. This is brand new this week, and this absolutely fire book is going for $110 average. A one in a hundred means that a store would have to order at least a hundred copies of the open to order issues to qualify to get one copy of this book that's brand new by Boom Studios, written by Stephanie Phillips. Masterfully illustrated by Flaviano, this follows a new take on the Grim Reaper, whose name is Jessica Harrow. I think Boom Studios has a hit on their hands. This right here follows a Grim Reaper doing her job, taking someone whose soul needs to be transported to the afterlife from point A to point B. And we have a deep dive into that process with the mystery behind how she even got the job in the first place. Jessica doesn't know how she died. In addition to this incredible Jenny Frizen cover, there's another one in 25 Jenny Frizen foil cover that is different art. Boom Studios also had a final order cutoff reveal variant by Jay Lee. There is a color version and a one in 75 black and white. Not to be outdone, there is an unlockable variant that was only one per store, which is going to be very, very low print run that also made the trending 20 list on on Key Collector this week. That's right. We actually compiled this list of 10 from a larger list of 20 that gets updated every single week called the Trending 20 on the best comic app in existence. You got to download the app. You support the show if you use code TOM101 and unlock a free two-week subscription of the app in its entirety. But as much as 98% of the app is free for anyone to use, catalog your comic books, get suggested pricing, keep up on the rapidly moving marketplace, and find out what other variants accompany the books that get hot the week they drop at the list at number nine conan the barbarian issue number 24 the first cover appearance and second full appearance of red sonia tom i thought the last book on the list would be the only thing we were talking about that was grim this week but the chances of seeing red sonia <laughs> looked very grim for a while so it's awesome to see this book back on the list the song of red sonia making the list the powerful female sword-wielding protagonist from the Conan and the Barbarian run was optioned for over a year. In fact, a year ago to the very month, we knew the director attached as well as the actress who was going to portray Red Sonia. And as of March this last year, the director was dropped and the actress quit the role, seemingly putting this option news, this title, this IP back into development hell where it lay dormant for upwards of 14 years. Until this past week, news broke that production has indeed started up again, causing an uptick of copies sold of 467%. So we are reporting $160 average sales on the book this week and a high sale, a 9.6 on April 29th of $587. Keep in mind how quickly this market can turn. We have a 9.2 that went for $420 on May 7th. And then we have an 8.0 of the same book that went for $400 on May 9th. We're looking at many grades lower and it's only $20 less. I cannot wait to see a high sale on a higher grade CGC of this book. We're gonna keep our third eyes peeled on Conan the Barbarian 23 and you should too. It's the first appearance in full of Red Sonia written by Roy Thomas in the original Conan the Barbarian run. And just to throw in one of my favorites, if you guys need a little bit of extracurricular Red Sonia, there is a Red Sonia black, white, and red Red from Dynamite, number eight by David Mack is an incredible cover that I personally love. And now at the list of number eight, we warned the community that this book was prime for purchasing now before it went up anymore because it's been undervalued and underappreciated for way too long. We have Legends number one, the first appearance of Amanda Waller in comic books, seeing a $10 average sale 
$160 for a CGC 9.8. Butch is biting me because he loves this book so much. But here's the thing. Last week, we reported the same numbers. However, it was after the Peacemaker spinoff confirmed that Amanda Waller would reprise her role. And we saw a 1,250% increase last week in this comic book. This week, on top of that, we have a 120% increase making this book land on the list again consecutively. We have a repeat offender on our hands. Viola Davis is so great for Amanda Waller, and I'm just excited to see this book finally getting more of the love it deserves. Russ, we're going to need to call in a spotter. This next spec, this next funny book is too heavy. We had to get the friendly neighborhood bodybuilder to cover it. Number seven on the list is Marvel premiere issue number 55, the first solo Wonder Man story. This book saw a robust increase of 600% of copies sold this week versus last week after being featured on my YouTube channel. For a few years now, there have been rumors swirling that Wonder Man was coming to the MCU. And as of late, those rumors have begun to swirl anew as industry insiders have let it be known that Marvel has a desire to introduce the West Coast Avengers into the MCU, which sort of makes sense if you think about it because there are actually a ton of West Coast Avengers already in the MCU. This includes the Colorless Vision, Scarlet Witch, Hawkeye, War Machine, and most recently, Moon Knight. There have been two high sales of this comic, and both occurred on May 10th. A CGC 8.0 sold for $106, and a CGC 9.2 sold for $86. This book currently has a raw average price of $8. Other Wonder Man keys to keep your eyes open for include Avengers issue number 9, his first appearance, as well as West Coast Avengers issue number 1, which is the first appearance and the origin of the WCA, which at the time included Hawkeye, Iron Man, Wonder Man, Mockingbird, and also Tigra. Comic fam, make sure you're subscribed to Reggie Collects by hitting the link in the description. He makes some of the best comic book themed content on YouTube, and he's one of our best friends in the YouTube space at the list. At number six, fair warning, it's been a week. Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness is out. We're going to put a spoiler warning on the screen, but we got to tell you about the books that are getting hot. Taking it back to 1968, Doctor Strange 175. $85 average sales and $735 for a CGC 9.6 for this first cover appearance of Clea. Now we've been hearing rumors for a while now that Charlize Theron was going to be Clea in the Doctor Strange movie. Well, if you stuck around for the mid part of the credits, you found out she's there. A 488% increase in copies sold on this book. Hot damn! Comic fam. And I also thought it worth mentioning, they kind of did Clea dirty by putting her in just like the footer of the cover for her first cover appearance. Very similar to what they did to Doctor Strange because he was a backup character post his first appearance, not appearing on the cover until Strange Tales 118, where they essentially did the same thing. He's barely on it. Now it's not just this book. Over on the Hot 10 list with Gem Mint, we saw Strange Tales 126, number four on the list with a 34% increase. This book was going for $821 in February in a 6.5. That same book went for $1,100 in the same grade just a few months later. That's the first appearance of Dormammu and Clea in comics, but she is unnamed. And there are more key issues to consider. Strange Tales 127, the second appearance of Dormammu, the second appearance of Clea, the first battle of Doctor Strange and Dormammu, as well as the introduction of the Eye of Agamotto and the Cloak of Levitation. Multiple key reasons to collect those second appearances. So for those of you playing at home, that's two appearances of Clea where they don't even mention her name. They don't say her name until Strange Tales number 146, which is the final issue that Steve Ditko works on there. And it's the first team appearance of AIM, the Advanced Idea Mechanics. This is the book where when people talk about the Ditko psychedelic madness that he was doing in comics gets 
on display in full. You get the Eternity Dormammu battle. It gets so damn good. And then he leaves the run. There are so many comics to consider. I'm loving it. We're seeing a character hit the screen and members get a whole other look at key books that they undervalued for quite a long time. Number five on the list, another spoiler warning, guys, Fantastic Four number 245. One of my favorite John Byrne covers, truthfully. I really do like this cover. $15 average sales and a $300 CDC 9.8. First appearance of Avatar Franklin Richards as an adult. That $300 sale happened in April, so I expect this book to go up even further when the next one hits the marketplace, an increase of 700% because we got the reveal that we've been waiting for for years years the community's been demanding john krasinski as reed richards and if you watch dr strange multiverse of madness you see a multiverse appearance of the character indeed john krasinski and he goes as far to mention in response to scarlet witch that he does have a wife and they have children we have franklin richards existing in the marvel cinematic universe and this book has creeped up because it's a major moment for the character we see him as an adult for the first time he uses his powers by accident, because he's so powerful, to age himself up, which would be resolved by the end of the issue. But this is a key nonetheless. Comic fam, if you want to support the show, you have until midnight on Sunday night after this video drops to get into the mystery mail call for May. We have two boys key reprints going out in every single box. Big warning, it's a mature month. We have Boys Number 7, a Starlight cover by horror legend Ben Temple Smith. Boys 7 is the first appearance of Stormfront in comics, likely to make an appearance in Boys Season 3, which drops in June. And we doubled down, reached out to our Canadian artist friend Johnny Desjardins to do a Homelander cover on Herogasm number one, which is the first appearance of Soldier Boy to be betrayed by Jensen Ackles of supernatural fame in Boys Season 3. Grab two key books guaranteed in each box. We have three different versions going out at random. Go to ComicTom101.com. Click the link in the description. Support what we do, comic fam. And at the list at number four, we have Brian K. Von Goodness, an IP we have been waiting anxiously to see any updates on for quite some time since the option news was dropped, courtesy of Key Collector Comics back in July 2019. We have Paper Girls number one. Seeing $25 average sales, an increase of copies sold of 700% this week, and a high sale for a CGC 9.8 of 150 bones. And a 9.8 has been seeing sales of between 80 and a hundred dollars for months but with the recent teaser being dropped this book is shooting up brian k vaughn hit it out of the park again with this one it is a 30 issue series it's really easy to collect and read it follows the lives of four newspaper delivery girls who happen to stumble upon an alien invasion and pits them between two different groups of time traveling people who are fighting with each other it is crazy it has every it has aliens it has time travel it's heartfelt it's really a great story and i think brian k vaughn did an amazing job with this one and what's this incoming possibly worlds colliding let's like run through this real quick in the last year the marvel cinematic universe has introduced variants because of timelines that have been created so we have characters who can be any other character but that's not all with doctor strange multiverse of madness really starting with spider-man far from home we have characters from other universes superheroes that exist in other realities that also exist in the Marvel Universe. This sounds like a cluster and it's gonna be a big problem long term. Could we be seeing the first signs of the next major movie event? Could it be Secret Wars? Secret Wars number one from 2015. A $5 average sales and a $20 high raw sale. This book saw a 929% increase in copies sold on the mention of the word incursion in the new Doctor Strange movie. Now, normally incursion refers to Jonathan Hickman's Marvel Earth 616 colliding with Brian Michael Bendis's Ultimate Universe that's where this comes together. Only one of these worlds can survive, and will it lead us to a battle world? There's a lot of characters being introduced in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and Secret Wars is pretty much the only thing I can think of that could live up and exceed the hype 
that Endgame completed with the introduction of the Infinity Gauntlet. Another great week of comic fam members on the hunt. If you want to get mentioned in a video, make sure you tag us, Comic Tom 101 or Milgi Comics over on Instagram. We had CD Comics showing off his Invincible Iron Man number seven. First, Riri Williams signed by Brian Michael Bendis. GDS 52 showing off his Jim Rugg goodness, Hulk Grand Design, the complete two-issue set. We had Grails to Astonish showing off his Swamp Thing number one, one of my favorites. And I gotta be real with you, brother. I'm pretty jelly of this next member. Morse comic book showing off his Crow number one, James Obar goodness. Graded at a 9.8, that's a tough book. For those of you that know my background, I'm a massive video game guy. So when I saw Nicholas Goltra comic pulling out the super deep cut blip number one and two with the Donkey Kong and Mario appearance, oh my God, I was excited. Next at the list of number two, hit that like button, comic fan. We need your support. And comment down below, what do you think about the list so far? What do you think about Doctor Strange? It wants you to win this Omni-Man Invincible whatnot variant. We have Vengeance number one, the first appearance of... America Chavez. $300 average sales. We have a recent high sale of $1,250 for a CGC 9.8. Now there's been another one that was a little lower than that and we're going to see some natural ebbs and flows as more of these books come to market. This is the first appearance of Miss America, also known as America Chavez. If you saw the Doctor Strange movie, Sochi Gomez does such an incredible job of this young Marvel character. This is a low print run book. There are only 25,000, 26,000 of these that were made and getting them in a 9.8 is going to be difficult. I'm very excited to see Sochi Gomez be America Chavez more times because this is really the start of something great in the MCU. We're seeing a 308% increase in copies sold over the last week for the first appearance of America Chavez. Russ just went over how low of a print run that was. So imagine how low the print run is for the 1 in 15 Mike Diodato variant. And let's talk about how much that book has moved up in recent years. America Chavez is going to be on the screen a lot. Zochi Gomez is 16 years old. Her journey is just starting. And back in 2020, you could have secured this 9.8 for $600. 2021, the book went way up after the announcement of her being included in Doctor Strange to $5,800. This year, we saw it hit heights of 6K. Recent sales put it at 4,400. I think this book is prime for speculation. America Chavez is here to stay. One of my favorite next-gen heroes. Comic fam, for the second week in a row, we lost another legend. And with the passing of George Perez, it's absolutely just a wonderful time to be able to celebrate what a great artist he was. And one of his most classic covers is number one on this list, but we want you to know that out of respect for him and his memory, we will not be mentioning prices. This is the trending list. The, the books that members are securing the week of. And similar to last week, members aggressively bought a lot of Neil Adams keys, and we didn't cover the prices on the book that we discussed last week for the same reason. And we're not going to do that here today for George Perez because part of the graving process is securing books of members' favorite creators. And we saw an increase of copies sold of this glorious book of 344% for that very reason. A wraparound cover, one of the most glorious wraparound covers of all time. We have Wonder Woman number one, cover art done by legend George Perez, debuting in 1987. Now, this Wonder Woman cover is truly unparalleled. And, and as we've been celebrating George Perez's life over the last few months since he made his announcement, we have been looking a lot at the work that he's been doing. This Wonder Woman number one is incredible. It's a wraparound cover. There are so many poses of Diana on this book, standing and kneeling in every single thing. The detail is incredible. Every single time I look at it, it reminds me how much of a master George Perez was. What George George Perez was able to accomplish with a pen and paper, modern day artists who work heavily in digital can't even do it with computer tricks. He was able to put so many characters on one single page in one panel at times, wrap around covers, double page spreads that most artists would find difficult to not burden and make it a cluster and confusing to look at. And George Perez was able to do it with such precision that it's unmatched in the industry to this day. As the world starts to reopen, 
more conventions are happening. And Tom and I and the rest of the team have been talking a lot about going back to conventions. And the one thing that we have come back to time and time again with losing pillars of the industry, go and make those moments with these artists and writers that you want to meet. They are there at conventions for you to have interactions with. This could be your only chance and you really got to do it, Comic Fam. Our condolences to the families of both Neil Adams and George Perez. And to both legends of our industry, rest in power. As always. Geek responsibly. Enough said. Comic fam, I'm going to be at MegaCon, likely with the guru, Heron Heaven. Skeleton Key Comics is going to be there, as well as Danielle from Nerdy Girl Comics. Come see me. I'm going to be in the comics section doing some hunting. I'll be at the Whatnot booth as well. And we also have two other videos for you to check out. We made them for you. Enjoy them. <laughs>